Hello, uh, my name is Catherine from SEB Housing, and this is the information session for the 24 affordable rental housing units at the Lodge in Marlboro. And the purpose of this session is to give a little bit of background information on the available units. I'm also going to cover the application, the eligibility and lottery processes for the affordable program, and then what to expect after the lottery takes place. So if you have any questions during the session, you can either type them into the chat or you can unmute yourself and let me know. And um, this session is being recorded for anyone who wants to take a look at it afterwards. If they weren't able to attend tonight, it will be posted to our to SCB Housing's YouTube channel and also to the website listing. Um, so just for some background information on who we are, so SEB Housing, we're a consultant group we are not the on-site management team at the Lodge. Uh, we've been hired by the developer to market the affordable units, conduct this information session, collect and review lottery applicants' applications, and determine eligibility, and then also run the lottery. So in the initial phases of this screening process, we are your main point of contact rather than the management office. But then further along, um, in the process, the on-site management team, which will be um, members of the Graystar team at the Lodge, will take over as your main point of contact. So the first step in the process is to apply for the lottery, and um, hopefully you qualify for the affordable housing program based on your application. You'll be in touch with SCB Housing when you submit your application. We'll let you know that it was received and you will be given a lottery application number, which I'll talk more about in a few minutes. At this point in the process, um, you do not need to submit any verifying documentation. It's really just that lottery application that you wanna get into us before the deadline. And then step two in the process, if your position on the waiting list after the lottery is high enough, you'll be invited to complete a program certification with SCB Housing. And that's the point in the process where you'll have to submit your supporting documentation like pay stubs, um, tax returns, that sort of thing. And then the third and final step in the process is if you are approved by SCB Housing for the Affordable Housing Program, you'll be put in touch with the leasing office and they will determine your lease eligibility. So you'll do the, um, the normal lease screening that they would be performing with market rate um, households as well and you would they might do you know credit check rental history check that sort of thing and then if your lease approved you'll be able to move in and sign a lease so um if you haven't already there is a website listing for um the lodge on our website so if you go to scbhousing.com you will see that other under our housing opportunities page there's a button you click that says, I want to rent. If you select the lodge, you'll be taken to a page specific to this property, and there'll be a downloadable version of the application, the information packet, as well as a job form link, which is a link to the online application. So on your screen now, uh, you'll see the job form link that I'm talking about. There's also a QR code for the lottery application on our materials. So we encourage you to complete the application online. It's the quickest way to apply. Uh, it ensures that we receive it right away. And once you've submitted that online application, you'll receive a confirmation email instantaneously. Uh, if for any reason the online application is not an option for you, you can use the downloadable version, the PDF of the application that's on our uh, website, or you can request it from us if you need it mailed to you. Um, if you're completing that paper application, you can submit it to us in one of several ways. So you can send it by regular mail, you can fax it to us, you can email it to us at info at scbhousing.com. Um, but again, we do encourage you, if you're able to, to fill out that online application just because uh, it'll be probably be easiest for you if you do have access to a computer uh, or your phone. So we do encourage you to submit the lottery application as early as possible. It is fairly brief, so it should only take you maybe 10 minutes or so to complete. Again, no supporting documentation is needed at this time. The deadline to apply for this lottery is April 9th. 
and the online application will shut down at 2 p.m. on April 9th. So it's really 2 o'clock on that date that is your last chance to submit that online application. You don't need to be a resident of the city of Marlboro to apply for this lottery. However, there are going to be some affordable units that have local preference for residents who live in Marlboro, work full-time in Marlboro, um, and um, also households with a documented need for a uh, disabled accessible unit are going to have priority for the units that do have uh, handicap accessible features. All right, so a little more information about the units themselves. So the Lodge does have a website, which is on your screen now. So the Lodge Marlboro, shorthand Marlboro, so M-A-L-M-A-R-L-B-O-R-O. -O. Um, on that website, there is a virtual tour, which is kind of cool. I looked at that. Um, there's renderings of the property that you may not have seen. There's additional information on amenities. So check that out if you haven't already. Uh, we've been told that it's, it's expected that the first leases will be available around July 1st. Uh, construction is ongoing right now. So around July 1st for those first move-in dates with construction continuing until about November. So there will be affordable units becoming available between those dates. So July, August, September, you know, there'll be, there'll be staggered um, availability between those dates. So not all 24 affordable units will be available right uh, as of July. So the Lodge, it's a brand new development. The address is 3000 Green District Boulevard in Marlboro. There's these 24 affordable apartments that are going to be rented to households with annual household incomes at or below 80% of the area median income. And I'll talk a lot more about what those numbers are in a few minutes as well. So the units themselves are going to feature walk-in closets, premium kitchen appliances, in-unit laundry, and then the community itself at the lodge has a number of amenities. So indoors, there is a fitness center, a kids' play area, a golf simulator, co-working space, and then outside there is a pool, a fire pit, a roof deck, an outdoor kitchen with a grilling area. And um, there's also a dog park. If you have a dog, there's a dog washing and grooming facility there as well. And um, the location is, is close to Interstate 495, so it'll give you easy access to the highway there. And then close also to the various restaurants and shops on Route 20 in Marlboro. Tenants are going to be responsible for paying utilities. So that includes gas heat, gas hot water, gas cooking as well as electricity, water, and sewer. There is parking available for residents, so that is included in the rent. And the units themselves, so there are two studios, and the affordable rent for those is $1,863. There are 12 one-bedrooms, and they will rent for $2,130. One of those uh, one-bedrooms has been built out for persons with disabilities. So it is considered disabled accessible. There's nine two bedroom apartments. They're going to rent for $2,326. One of those two bedrooms is disabled accessible. And there's one three bedroom apartment that will rent for $2,492. And that three bedroom apartment is disabled accessible as well. Um, so these affordable rents are not set in accordance with applicants' financial circumstances or income. So what I mean by that is the rents are not going to change if your income changes. So this isn't like a subsidized affordable housing program where you have a voucher and an agency is going to pay a certain amount of your rent. Uh, these are just um, these are set rent amounts that have been set below what the market rate. Um, and significantly below normally um, the market rate units are going for in the same building. So there's market, there's a lot of market rate units at the lodge, and um, the rents are quite are a lot higher for those. So the rents are set for this housing program using a formula based on HUD's area median income, or AMI, for the Marlboro Boston area. 
So those amounts are released each spring by HUD. So the rent might increase one time, once per year, and it typically occurs in the spring. Now, if you lease up this year, your rent's not going to increase until at least after your first lease renewal. So for the first year of your lease, your rent is not going to go up at all. When they do increase, uh, when affordable rents increase, it's not, it's usually a modest increase, somewhere between $25 to $75. But again, you will always have um, ample notice of the increase at your lease renewal or ahead of your lease, lease renewal, I should say. So since we anticipate there's going to be more interested and eligible applicants for these 24 available units, the apartments are being made available through this lottery process only to households to qualify for the uh, program. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Um, so we covered a lot of the logistical information, you know, basic overview of the units at the lodge. So I'm going to move on to the eligibility requirements for the affordable housing program. So on your screen right now, you'll see the minimum, sorry, the maximum income limit and then the approximate minimum incomes that are required to rent one of these affordable units. So I'm gonna explain the eligibility requirements now and I'll go over those numbers as well. So there's um, four eligibility requirements on page four of the information packet. And if you haven't taken a look at the information packet yet, uh, that is the document that I am pulling most of this information from. Um, I'm not going to be able to go through the whole document. So if you're interested in these units, I do suggest that you take a look at the information packet, which is available on the website listing. So the first eligibility criteria for this affordable housing program is that households who are applying for these for the lottery must have qualifying income and assets. So um, the parameters are on your screen right now, but for this lottery, applicants must have a household have a household income that is at or below 80% of the area median income. So if you look at the maximum income limit there for a two-person household, if your income is at or below $94,800, you, you um, should qualify for this opportunity. The second item to keep in mind for program eligibility purposes is that household priority is going to be given based on household composition. So what that means is, for example, if you're a one person household or maybe you're a couple who shares a bedroom, you're generally considered to be a type one household. So you can apply for a two bedroom apartment, but larger type two and three households are going to be placed ahead of you on the two bedroom waiting list. Um, some examples of a type two household or a type three household would be all high, households who have three or more uh, people, as well as some two person households. So if you look at the info pack, there is a lot more details about the household size on your application. You're going to be identifying what you think your household size is, and we will confirm that when we review your application. So you'll know that when you are entered into the lottery. Um, households also cannot own a home at program certification. So if you own a home now, it would need to be sold prior to um, prior to leasing an apartment at the lodge. And so that could mean, you know, that would that would need to mean that your name was actually off of the deed for the home. And then the last eligibility criteria that doesn't come up very often, but households cannot have financial interest in the development can't be considered a related party. So if you work for the developer or the management company, you are not going to be eligible for this lottery opportunity. All right, and to circle back on the first eligibility criteria to explain more about income determination. So since these are affordable units, like I said, they're only being made available to households who qualify for this program and they are, uh, the rents are lower than the market rents at, for other units at the lodge. Uh, so again, verification of your income is not needed at this time, but you're going to self-report what your total household income is when you apply and when you submit your application to us. Um, all applicants will be provided with a documentation requirements guide once your initial application is reviewed and you've been found eligible for the lottery. So, this guide, it's a few pages long, and it, it details exactly what types of documentation we will need from you 
depending on the sources of your income and assets. So how many pay stubs we might need, how many bank statements from you, depending on what you're self-reporting on your application. Um, no matter what your income circumstances are, you're going to be required to submit copies of your um, last federal tax returns from last year. And so although we don't need a we don't need verification of any of this now, I'm going to give you a basic overview of how your income is going to be calculated. So income for this program, it is counted as a projection of your income, your total household income over the next 12 months. So for all, it's all income for um, every member of your household. So it includes bonuses, overtime, you know, income that maybe isn't coming in on the regular. So the only exceptions to that rule is that anyone under the age of 18, so any minors in your household who are working, if they're earning a wage, we are not going to count their wage income. And then if you have any dependent full-time students who are working, um, we're only going to count the first $480 of their wages when we're determining your eligibility. We are required to count gross income, not the net income that you make after taxes. So although you know, we know that most of, most of us are not taking home the full amount of your salary, um, the program does require that we use your uh, or take into consideration your gross income when we're determining your program eligibility. So how we calculate your income is not one size fits all. So everyone's income circumstances are unique, of course, and some applicants are going to have a weekly salary that's very consistent throughout the year, but then there are um, people who are self-employed, they're working seasonally. In those circumstances, we're going to need to look further into the past in order to project anticipated income for the next 12 months. Um, specifically for applicants who are self-employed, so you're going to need to complete a profit and loss statement and provide supporting documentation for your business. So if you own a business, your uh, business expenses are going to be taken into account. But if you are not self-employed, it is the gross income that we need to count. We're not able to, you know, consider, um, you know, car payments, health insurance, that sort of thing as deductions, unfortunately. So in general, any income that you have been making, we're going to need to assume that you're going to continue making it going forward unless we have some sort of definitive documentation that would um, explain otherwise. So. For example, if you switch jobs and you have a, um, you know, it, that previous job is showing up on your tax returns, we would just need something from that employer uh, to show that you are no longer working there, or maybe bonus bonuses aren't going to be given this year, something like that, that we would be able to consider when projecting your income for the next year. And so when you're filling out the um, application online or, um, as a paper application, you're going to notice that there's a lot of different um, sections for different income sources. So it's not just wages, but um, you know, if you have social security income, um, child support, any of that, uh, you will need, you know, retirement, um, payouts, unemployment, that sort of thing. You're gonna want to put that all on your application so we um, have everything up front to verify. So I mentioned minimum income. So there's no minimum income for the affordable housing program. However, most management teams, including the team at the lodge, wants to be sure that all of their tenants are able to afford the rent, regardless of whether or not the household is renting a market rate or a affordable unit. Um, so the management company has set minimum household income and they're equivalent to two and a half times the monthly rent. Those amounts are in the information packet, but they're also on your screen right now. So if you're looking to rent a two bedroom, for example, you would need to have income that was around or above $69,780, but then also below the maximum income limit that the program that. Um, there are exceptions to the minimum income, though. So if you have liquid assets that you might be able to access, 
in order to uh, pay the rent, so bank accounts, that sort of thing. The leasing office will consider those when determining whether or not your household is eligible to rent from them. So it, ultimately, it's going to be the leasing office's decision as to whether or not your household qualifies for that minimum income, um, but that maximum income limit is exact and will you will need to fall below that. Uh, there's no wiggle room there for the maximum income limits that are program requirements. Now, if you have a Section 8 voucher or any other mobile housing voucher that you plan to use at this property when you're renting there, you can disregard the minimum income rents because, or minimum income uh, amounts because they're not going to apply to you. Uh, and that's because, you know, the, the administering agency for your voucher is going to be picking up a portion of your rent. Uh, but if you don't have a voucher, you will need to have household income between that minimum income floor and the maximum program income limits. Um, assets, so there are no asset um, limits for rental opportunities. So you might be a retired person who has significant amount of assets in uh, bank accounts, that's completely fine. There is no limit to how much you can have in, in accounts um, or stocks or anything like that. But I do want you to know that we are still going, even though we don't, there is no um, limit, we're going to need to collect information related to your assets. And that's because um, sometimes there's income that is generated by your assets. So we need to be able to count that generated income if you have interest on those accounts because it will count towards your total household income. So when you're writing that on your application, you're gonna be writing down, you know, checking savings accounts, CDs, uh, stock bonds, that sort of thing. You don't need verification of personal assets. You don't need to include, um, you know, car or jewelry, anything like that that you may have. Um, all right, so I've covered the eligibility criteria and um, I'm gonna move on to lottery eligibility and then the lottery itself. So again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I mentioned earlier, you, we want to get the process started. If you know that you're interested in this opportunity, we do encourage you to get your application in. Um, and also want to mention, too, when you're submitting the application, you can apply for more than one unit size. So if you think you'd be interested in both, for example, a studio and a one bedroom, you should definitely indicate that on your application. There's no downside to doing so. But there is a potential downside if you only apply for one unit size and then you decide later on, well, maybe I would be open to a studio, for example. And um, that downside would be that the waiting list could already be quite long for that other unit size. So you want to get your name into the lottery for as many uh, unit sizes that you're interested in. So just indicate that on your application. Once you submit your application, hopefully through that online, um, link. We're going to review it. You'll get that instantaneous um, sort of like bounce back message from the um, lottery application website itself, letting you know that it was received. But then about a, a week later, maybe two weeks later, you'll get a email from info at scbhousing.com that will confirm that we received your application. If there's anything missing, we'll let you know. Um, if you're found eligible for the lottery, You'll also get in, uh, the, in this email from info at scbhousing.com, it will have your lottery application number, which is going to be in the form of a dot, a series of numbers. That's just meant to be an anonymous identifier for the lottery drawing. We're not going to be calling out your first and last name at the lottery. Um, it's not a ranking of any sort. It just corresponds with the order in which your application was approved. So if you were the first person to submit an application and be approved for the lottery at the lodge, your number is going to be A.001. And that's the number that, is again, is going to be drawn during the lottery. So you're going to want to hold on to that and have it handy. The email that you get from info at scbhousing.com is also going to confirm whether your household reported being a resident of Marlboro or working full time in Marlboro, so you could potentially be eligible for local preference. Um, if you indicated that you have local preference, 
just like uh, the other supporting documentation that's going to be needed after the lottery takes place, you're going to need to supply verification of your residency in the city of Marlboro. Um, you want to make sure that you're reporting that accurately on your application because if you are uh, listed as, as having local preference on the waiting list and then when the time comes to move forward in the process, you aren't able to verify that, you're going to unfortunately forfeit your position on the waiting list. So just make sure that that's filled out accurately and you're not uh, you know, just glossing over it. Um, so the email that you get again when uh, you've been approved for the lottery. It's also going to confirm for you which bedroom sizes you've applied for, as well as whether or not you uh, requested a unit that is disabled accessible. So again, applicants that are in need of those special features of the disabled accessible units are going to have priority for those units over households who don't require the features of the units. And then also, finally, uh, an attachment to that email that you get with your lottery application number is going to be the documentation requirements guide. So I mentioned that guide being something that you could reference when you're gathering all of your documentation to um, move forward in the process and submit everything to us. If during this process you're found ineligible for the lottery, so if, say you get an email from us saying that you're over income, if you have any questions on that or you think it's inaccurate, please write back to us, let us know so we can look into that for you. The lottery itself is gonna take place on April 29th at 6 p.m. So more information about the lottery itself is gonna be included in your lottery application, I'm sorry, in your eligibility email. Um, but keep in mind that you're not required to be present for the lottery. Um, the lottery results are going to be shared with all households that evening or the following day. It will be conducted similar to this session. It will be recorded on um, Zoom. And for this lottery, we're going to be using a uh, random.org website. So it allows for instantaneous results. So the lottery numbers will be randomized using that service. And uh, you know, I'll be sharing a screen with you and the results of the drawing will be shared with attendees um, every lottery number is going to be drawn that evening, and I'm mentioning that because sometimes we think of, of lotteries as they're just being one winner, for example, or in this case, you know, 24 winners because there's 24 apartments, but that's really not the case here. So these lotteries are just held in order to establish an order of priority for the waiting list that need to be um, generated after the lottery. So it is more beneficial for you to have your to see that your lottery application number was drawn early on uh, ahead of a lot of other lottery application numbers, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be at the top of the waiting list. And um, the reason for that is because we still need to sort the results onto the waiting list. So not everyone is going to be applying for all of the unit sizes. Not everybody is going to be the same household type like we talked about. Um, so, for example, if you're a type one household and you were drawn first in the lottery, but you've only applied to a two bedroom apartment, you're still going to be behind all of the type two households on the two bedroom waiting list. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking through the information packet, there's more information about the order of priority for each waiting list. Um, but, you know, say you're further down the waiting list, your number was drawn pretty late in the process, you shouldn't necessarily take that to mean that you're not going to be able to rent one of these apartments. You may still have the opportunity to do so because, uh, you know, for every lottery, there's households who uh, decide they're no longer interested or maybe they're not eligible once they get further along in the process. So keep all that in mind. Um, like I said, typically the results are sent either that evening or the next day. So you will know, even if you don't attend the lottery live, you're going to know um, the results pretty soon afterwards. Um, when you get that email with the lottery results, which will also be sent from info at scbhousing.com, that's the email address that you'll be looking for in your inbox, um, the waiting lists are going to be attached 
to that email. And you're going to be looking for your lottery application number on the waiting list. So again, your name isn't going to be listed or anything. You're just going to have that lottery application number handy uh, to be able to see where you placed on the waiting list. Um, so at that point, you'll have a better idea as to whether or not you're going to be called forward by the leasing office right away to move forward in the process. And that next step in the process after the lottery is to get in touch with the management team and um, you know your information will be provided to them and vice versa and you'll be able to apply for the lease. So you'll be able to go through their lease screening process at that point and um, that is the point in time where they're going to be potentially doing you know credit checks, rental history checks, that sort of thing to determine if you're eligible to rent with them. And so you want to be aware that this is the case with most leasing offices, but um, they may be inviting more households to complete a lease screening than there are available units. So for example, at the lodge, there are nine two bedroom affordable units, but they're probably going to be inviting more than nine households to complete their lease screening. It's very typical of management companies. And the reason that that is done is because they don't want the process um, of leasing the unit slowed down by households who maybe don't qualify either for their lease screening or for the affordable housing program. Um, so for that reason, even if you're the first household on the waiting list, you, you want to make sure that you're not giving notice to your current um, property owner if you're renting. And that's because there's still a couple of um, there's still a couple of steps in the process. So until you have reserved a unit or you've leased a unit, you don't want to give notice uh, to move out. If you are lease approved by the leasing office, that's the point in the process where it is um, particularly beneficial to have a favorable position on the waiting list. So if you're the top household on, say, the two-bedroom waiting list, you're going to have the first selection of an affordable unit. So you'll be able to, you know, Take a tour of the property, decide which of the two bedrooms would be your first choice, that sort of thing. And you can make that decision based on whatever factors are important to you. And then the second household on the two bedroom waiting list will have the second choice of the remaining units and so on. Once you have worked with the leasing office and reserved an affordable apartment, um, they will notice the leasing office will notify SCB Housing and we'll get in touch with you to work out um, the next step in the process, which is the program certification. So that's the point in the process where again, we'll be asking for your income asset and tax documentation, because remember so far, um, you have only self-reported your income to SEB housing. So you had, when you submitted your lottery application, you didn't submit any pay stubs or anything like that, but we, we'll be reviewing all of that at that point. So hopefully you've had a chance to review the documentation requirements guide that was sent with your lottery application number and you've been able to gather some of those documentation, um, some of the required documentation. You'll have about 10 days to get that information into us and um, you know we'll work with you during the process. There's a lot of information that you're going to need to provide. It's very typical for applicants to not submit everything on the first try. So you'll be given another chance to complete the application. So no worries if you don't have that information for us on that first um, try. Once SCB Housing approves your file, we're gonna notify, um, we're gonna notify you obviously that you're approved and where you're going to then be able to sign the lease and establish a move-in date with the leasing office. So we'll also, inform the leasing office um, that they, you can move forward with your reservation. Our program certifications are good for six months. So if for any reason you are program certified but then don't move into an apartment until six months or more later, you might need to update your in income information with us, but um, that probably won't be the case here because if most of the units are going to be available by November, um, we would not be screening your application for another couple of months from now anyway. So just wanted to put that out there in case it does happen that you're not moving in for um, six months or so. Um, so once you're leased, you're done with your screenings. You don't have to submit any more information during the year. 
Um, but then if you, um, you know, have stayed in the unit for a year, we hope you loved it. We hope you wanted to continue living there. If you do, you will need to recertify your income with the leasing office. And um, at that point, you would need to recertify with them and have your income and asset documentation handy. So we always um, encourage applicants who are, or households, excuse me, who are renting affordable apartments, um, you know, just keep a, a folder or something like that with your current pay stub, tax returns, that sort of thing. So you have that um, handy for your recertifications as long as you're living in an affordable apartment. If your income has increased during the year, um, it doesn't mean you need to move out at your recertification. If uh, you know, you've qualified for the affordable housing program because your household income was at or below 80% of the area median income, but your total household income can be up to 140% of the area median income at your recertification, and you'll still qualify for the affordable rent and for the affordable apartment. So, uh, an example of that is if you are a two-person household, you would have qualified for this lottery with an income at or below $94,800. That same family, that same two-person household can make up to $132,720 at the time of recertification in order to remain eligible to rent that affordable apartment. Um, so a little bit of wiggle room there for the first year. You don't have to worry about uh, needing to move after the first year if you do have a raise or, or any kind of income increase. Um, that about covers what I wanted to get through from the information packet. Again, I recommend that you take a look at that if you're interested in this opportunity. And um, again, the application deadline is April 9th. The um, QR code and the link for the online application are on our website. They're on the materials that you may have seen. Um, that is the easiest way to apply, or we have that PDF version of the application on our website as well, if you'd rather do it that way. And then if any questions come up after tonight, um, feel free to email us at info at scbhousing.com. That's the quickest way to get in touch with us probably. Um, but any questions before I let you go? I, I, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, how does it work if we're interested in more than one lottery? For yep, example, you can apply, you can apply okay. as many lotteries as you yeah. want. Yep. Um, I'm a longtime resident of Watertown, so that would mm -hmm. be my preference, but mm -hmm. if the I saw the 166 main. Mm -hmm. Does yep, it work you can apply out? to that as well. Yeah. So yes. there's no penalty or restrictions to write. Nope, not at all. Not at all. You can apply to as many as you want. Obviously, you'd make the decision if you're one of the top, um, you know, households on any of those waiting lists. Mm -hmm. um, or if you wanted to hold off and see maybe you were close to the top, but not quite at the top, and you wanted to yep. hold off, you could always do that too. Um, so yeah, no restrictions. You can apply, uh, you know, to our lotteries, you can apply to other lotteries either way. Yep. Great. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. So, um, again, any questions after tonight, if you didn't think of it, uh, but you think of something after the fact, you can email us at info at scbhousing.com and, um, we hope to get an application from you soon. Great. Thanks for the information. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks for joining.